There is no doubt that the 1970s was a different time. Anyone who looks back at some of the photographs from that decade can quickly see how crazy the clothes, hairstyles, homes, and of course the cars were. But it really was a great decade to experience. Even the toys that we enjoyed were a bit different. In this video, we will have a look back and remember some of those that you may have forgotten about. Long before Grand Theft Auto or even Pole Position, there was the Drive Yourself Crazy game. This analog game provided hours of entertainment and for many kids it was their first start in perfecting their driving skills. In the 70s, every little kid loved Fisher Price's Little People. They had many different playsets like the Auto Garage or this one, the Castle. It had doors, windows, ramps, stairs, and so much more for little hands to explore. The original Weebles were an egg-shaped toy that many kids loved. They were incredibly sturdy and they also had a catchy phrase, Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. If there is one company that helped pave the way for Nintendo's handheld Game Boy, then it has to be Mattel. They had simple handheld games like this one with only 9 buttons and an LCD screen. At the time, these were great to have in the car on long road trips and they were highly entertaining. If you happen to still have the Fisher Price pocket camera and you want to pass it down to your grandkids or great grandkids, then it's probably going to confuse them. There is a high probability that they have never seen a 110 camera or a flash cube. Wooly Willy was a magnetic game that helped young boys experiment with facial hair long before they could even grow any. It had a magnetic wand that would pull the iron shavings over the desired area for different hairy situations. The Quick Shoot turned kids into rootin' tootin' marble shootin' sharpshooters. This good old fashioned fun is a great way to pull kids away from their screen and experience something from the past. The Super Spiral Graph was a favorite for both girls and boys. This edition contained more spinners than the average Spiral Graph so you can make even more cool patterns. Chances are kids would love them if they were just exposed to them and you'll love showing them what you used to do. The Astro Ray Gun was a weapon that was powered by friction and shot off sparks when the trigger was pulled. If you were really excited about this toy, then there's a good chance that you wore a fishbowl on your head while running around firing the gun in your yard. This next toy may seem silly to be on here, but I can't help but mention it. Legos. Yes, of course they are still around, but there are zillions of more colors, shapes, sizes, and themes than there were in the 1970s. This particular old box set required you to use some real imagination in your creations. In the 1970s, this would have been our first person shooter game. It was the next best thing to going to the fair. Tomy had quite a few of these little pocket games on the market. The 70s was all about knitting and little girls also wanted to get in on the hobby. Mattel came out with a knit magic toy and soon everyone was receiving knitted gifts at Christmas, birthdays, and special occasions. We may not have had our own Google Chromebook as kids in the 70s, but we did have our very own laptop. The Fisher Price Learning Death Set was how most of us learned how to spell. Today this might confuse kids as they try to match the letters instead of typing them. At one time, we were really encouraged to be creative with the types of toys that we had and the light bright was no exception. Kids were happy and content, poking colored pegs into the black paper as the light behind it transformed their creations into colorful works of art. Remember how entertained we were with kaleidoscopes? These were simple little toys that let us look at our surroundings in a completely different way. The interesting thing about this toy was that you only needed one eye to enjoy it. Cash registers were at every store when we were kids and they looked a lot more similar to this than they do today. 
This cash register was a toy that was made by Fisher Price, but kids loved it and it kept them busy for hours. What house in the 1970s didn't have these? Raggedy Ann and Andy. They were simple little pals with yarn hair, but they definitely are not something that you see kids with anymore. Over the years, Parker Brothers has had a lot of fun games. Payday was one of those, and for many kids, this was their first introduction into the world of an adult. It was a whole lot more fun when you were playing with paper money and dealing with make-believe scenarios. Today, there are many different generations that know about Transformers, but that's probably not the case with Micronauts. They were in a league of their own, and these little articulated action figures are due for a comeback. Perfection was a super fun game, but it may have given many kids anxiety disorders in their adult life. In order to beat the timer and avoid the popping scare, you had to remain as cool as a cucumber under pressure. It was the perfect game to hone those skills if you wanted to grow up and disarm bombs. If you couldn't get your hands on an Atari, then perhaps you had the Telstar video game system. It was made for sports fans and gave users the opportunity to play electronic tennis, hockey, and handball long before Nintendo gave us the Wii. When the Simon Memory Game came out in 1978, it quickly became a coffee table favorite. This little game tested your memory skills, which seems to be something missing in modern games. If you've ever seen younger drivers pulling up to an intersection with stop signs, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The Fisher Price Medical Care playset inspired many kids to become doctors and nurses. There were many kids who treated their teddy bears, and if you had one of these, then you can certainly remember hearing a heartbeat through the stethoscope. For more than five years, Starsky and Hutch and their trusty Gran Torino graced our television screens during the 1970s. Kids pretended to be them, and this little RC car was a blast racing it around in the driveway. As you look back at some of these toys, it's almost amazing to think how the simplest things entertain kids. These dancing Mickey Mouse toys would move when you pressed a button. They were certainly a favorite in the car on cross-country road trips. What kid didn't have a Mattel Jack-in-the-Box toy? This might be the single reason why so many people seem to be scared of clowns. It was a perfect toy for those that wanted to scare the crap out of their cat or their younger sibling. If you have granddaughters or great-granddaughters that are into Barbie dolls, then perhaps you may want to look into getting this couple on eBay. There is no way that they will know who Sonny and Cher are, and the other little girls may think that these are the coolest Barbies ever. One of the biggest names in the 1970s was Evil Knievel. He inspired us to jump our bikes on death-defying ramps out in the streets. But there was also a line of toys that many kids wanted as well. There were action figures, funny cars, and motorcycles just to name a few. For many people, Evil Knievel toys will represent a childhood when we looked up to a stuntman. Way before VCRs and Netflix, we actually had a family game night and it was a ton of fun. The classic Ants in the Pants game is easy to learn and perfect for little ones. This building kit was from Milton Bradley, and it was called the Constructo Straws. The set came with a variety of bendy straws and plastic pieces to attach them. It was another way for kids to learn how to think three-dimensional. Hungry Hungry Hippos was a simple game that came out in 1978. It's just as fun now as it was then. So if you still have one of these, then break it out the next time there's a family get-together and let the games begin. Tommy's Tudor typewriter toy was just like the one that mom and dad used and it even made the signature ding sound. This little toy was how many kids first learned how to type. If the weather was bad outside, then it was the perfect time to try your hand at playing Boggle. 
You never knew how fast time could fly until you tried to find words and anagrams with random letters that it spit out after being shaken. It will definitely boggle your brain. The Bionic Woman board game is a perfect example of what is not around anymore. It was another classic from Parker Brothers that was based off the television show. This game challenged kids to use her methods in order to get things done. There will always be the great debate on which decade was the best. However, if you personally experienced this decade, then this one might be your favorite. If you still have some of these toys, then consider yourself fortunate. Hopefully you've had the opportunity to share them with your younger generations. What were some of your favorite toys in the 1970s? Let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching.